Marcel Hannan is from the Stole. She's the wife of the late Tony Hannan, who was affected by the University Hospital Kerry scan review. Uh, Mr. Hannan was one of 11 patients of University Hospital Kerry affected by significant errors in the delayed diagnosis controversy at the hospital. His case was referred to as Case 8 in a report on the look-back review of radiology reports relating to 26,000 patients associated with an individual radiologist at UHK between March 2016 and July of last year. The report states that his cancer diagnosis was delayed by almost one year. Now the review itself as you will know if you've been following the story led to 422 patients being recalled to the hospital for reassessment and Tony um, sadly passed away. He, his death brings to six the number of people who have died as a result of this and um, the UHK report into what happened states that Tony's cancer diagnosis was delayed by 51 Weeks, um, Marcella. Good morning to you, and thanks very much for coming to us. Good morning, Jerry, and thank you for having me. Can you tell me first of all about, uh, I suppose, how all this started, really, um, for you and for Tony, and, and how you first became aware that something had gone wrong? Well, he had he had two X rays done in Tralee General in two sixteen, and they both came back that they were clear, but Tony was continuously being sick continuously getting pneumonia, the coughing. So, you know, you knew there was something wrong. So then in 2017, I kept asking and asking, eventually got another x-ray. And the lady came out to us and she asked Tony had he had pneumonia, which he had. So she said, well, there's an emergency report going out to your doctor. Now, that report went out to my doctor within two hours. So we knew by that evening that it was cancer so he had to go for a CT scan an emergency CT scan their emergency CT, CT scan was another four weeks they were going to put another four weeks onto but I got that brought down to one week and then he had to go for PET scan another four or five weeks you know an emergency to me is within a week not four yeah. or five weeks down an, the road. An, an urgent scan should mean an urgent scan. Exactly. You know, but I, I fought and fought and we got them. So then we found out that he had stage three lung cancer at that stage. But we didn't know anything about the misdiagnosis at that stage. So we started in Cork and because he had to have some horrific, and I mean dreadful, dreadful, very severe treatment, we went to Limerick. And he had radiotherapy and he had chemo. And he travelled every day, which my son and my daughter, who I'd be lost without, and my granddaughter here alongside me, they took him every day. Now, there was often I'd open that door and that man is on his knees with what he went through. You know, it, it, it's dreadful. It's horrendous. It's horrendous. Did he ever complain? Did he ever give out? No. You know, and then on the 8th of January, 2.17, we got the call. And the lady on the phone said to me, I'm sorry, but we have to tell you there's been a misdiagnosis. And I asked at that stage, oh, my God, you're talking about an October x-ray. And she said, no, we're going further back than that. And there was a report into it, which the report was sent to me by taxi. And then... It was delivered, the report was delivered to your door by a by taxi, taxi driver. By a taxi driver. They didn't even have the decency to deliver that to me in person. They're here after, you know, you, you go through life and you're dealt a hand of cards, right? They dealt our hand of cards. It was them that has taken a wonderful, wonderful man away from us. He was a brilliant father, a fantastic grandfather. And, you know, he bore his illness so well. He was angry, angry at the NHSC. The HSC, yeah. The HSC, I can never get that right. Um, for what they had done. And have we got an apology from anybody? Has anybody come to see? He was living in a room. Oh, Jerry, it would have been half the size of this. The studio, yeah. The studio, with a bed. He was, he was downstairs, was he? In the well, it was room? a bungalow I had, but because he or had he, to have a hospital. 
he was in the front room for, he for space, but he couldn't be in his bedroom. No, he could not be in his bedroom for a year and a half. He had a hospital bed. That was his life for a year and a half. He was on oxygen 24 hours a day. He had nebulizers. For that man, even to go for... You would hop into a shower here before you come in the morning. It's yeah. great. To have, Tony to have a shower was horrendous. A major operation. It was a major operation. You showered and then he'd to wait a half an hour before he could get so much dressed and then so much more because of the breathlessness. This tumour had its chance. Now, even... They're fighting my case. Yeah. This situation, though, and, and before we get to that, how do you feel that from when you got the news and the call saying there's a problem, mm -hmm. there was a misdiagnosis, mm -hmm. and then the story hit the headlines about the problems with the scans and the call back and the review into it, 422 patients mm -hmm. being, being recalled, um, Tony amongst those most severely affected, obviously. How do you feel on a human level that the authorities have dealt with you and your family in terms of, you know, offering support? No. What sort of aid was given or, or no. you know, making things easier in the final few months of, of his life? Or no. how no. do you feel? You we were? got no support. We got no apology. We may have got a phone call a few times from um, a director in the hospital. Now, maybe that's not her proper title. I'm not too yeah, sure. Yeah, but somebody in the hospital. Somebody, somebody in the hospital. But as for somebody to come and see the conditions that Tony had to live in, to explain to him what happened, to apologise, no. Nobody has done that. Why, Jerry? Because they don't care. If you cared for something so much, you would go and make it right. You know, and it's when you don't care for something, you make it flippant. Is that what you can't understand? And, I can't. And do you understand on the on the other hand of it, Marcella, that we see things like this. We saw um, an award yesterday in the course of 32 million euro for issues with a child that had problems around its birth and mistakes get made. But the wider entity of the HSE or a hospital's group, be it the South South West Hospitals or one, it get, as soon as something goes wrong in this country, and, and it's been talked about in the Dáil, the issue of open disclosure and the issue of apologies, that it gets legalistic straight away. And the first thing to do is say nothing from the authorities. As cold and as heartless as that is, mm -hmm. that's the system they're operating off. But you're the one on the other side of it. Yes. On the human level. I am. And... Not once, I don't think, would anybody come down and look at the conditions that Tony had to be left to live in. They don't want to learn from their mistakes. If they wanted to learn from their mistakes, they would come and look at the devastation they leave behind. But they kind of put up this wall and they're behind it. And you're not going to get through. Mm. And they have got this kind of authority as if... A mistake. Uh, only 11 lives, I think, was mentioned at the very start. There are people's husbands, fathers, brothers. You know, how dare they put something so little on someone's life? Mm. They don't have that right. Tony initiated legal action before he died. There wasn't yes. a resolution to that by the time that he died. Where does that stand now from your family's point of view? No, it is still in with my solicitor um, in the stall, Michael Fitzpatrick. And he has evidence and very strong, strong evidence that the misdiagnosis you, happened. You, you, yeah, and you're, you're looking to, to, to go down that road. Do you want to go down that road? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. It meant a lot to Tony. It meant an awful lot. And I'm not letting... I lost a wonderful, wonderful man. I lost my best friend. We're together 40 years. We never fell out of love. We never... It's them. They dealt us that. They took him away from me. OK. You... You're going down that road, you will have to fight in court. Yes, I will. Um, would you prefer not to? Would I you would prefer, prefer Would you prefer to, to get um, an apology or, yes. or is it an issue and it can be and sometimes it can't be of compensation or as Tony wanted, I think, before he died, he talked about he just wants accountability. He wants to make sure it doesn't happen again. Is that mm -hmm. the main driving force. Yeah, he wanted to make sure that he would have loved an apology and to make sure that we were secure when he was gone. That was his big, big thing. And uh, compensation, probably, I don't know. Accountability or an apology, Jerry. I don't think I will get that. I don't think they have it in within themselves to give that. 
Do you look, Marcella, at cases that are in the media at the moment? If you if you want to relate this, and I'm not conflating it, but I'm saying it's a similar sort of situation in in some ways, not exactly the same. The circumstances aren't completely the same, but in relation to the the cervical check mm-hmm. issue and situations where people who have got very bad diagnosis when they shouldn't have go have still having to go to court mm-hmm. a year on from Antisha Gleivaragher promising, promising that nobody would have to yeah. go to court in these cases. Mm-hmm. But even when Pierce Doherty brought my case up earlier earlier on in the stage in the doll, yeah. in the doll I mean it was stated then that we wouldn't they wouldn't be fighting us. And you see this goes to show how oh, I put this the proof I the proof my solicitor has is awful strong, right? But there's still oh, what word would I use? It will still be yes. contested. It will still be con- even yeah. though it's there. And, and it, when you go into a courtroom, it, in many ways, anything can happen. So there's a worry and a concern, and there's yeah. the cost of it and everything else. You have to, you have to consider. But even though the proof is there mm. and very strong proof, the HSC are still not willing to accept. You know, there has to be a time in their lifetime and in Lear Varadkar and Simon Harris Simon Harris, so. that they have to accept something. They can't go through their government accepting nothing, which is what they're doing. Mm. They're not willing to say, oh my God, yeah, look, it did happen. And if it, and another thing is, it's because it's Kerry. If this happened up in Dublin, it would be dealt with so much different. You believe that? I do. I firmly believe that. But because we're here down in Kerry they can just kind of put a blanket over it. That's way down there, you know? That's not in my backyard. Mm. Marcella, you'd like to meet Simon Harris? Yes, I would. Yes, I would. Would you like to go to Dublin and meet him or would you like him to come I to Kerry mind. and meet with the families? Maybe well, affected? I would like him to come to Kerry and to show him the room that my husband had to live his last year and a half in. You know? And he'd done it with so much dignity and, you know... He was a fantastic man to look after. He never once complained. He never once gave out and said, look, why me? He was angry at Simon Harris. He was angry at, you know, the misdiagnosis. But he was a wonderful, wonderful man to be, you know, for this to happen to. Mm. Marcella, you're, 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 you'll put that call out there. Hopefully there'll be a response that Hopefully. the state have said and, and the HSE have said and the hospital have said that they're continuing to keep an eye and continuing to, to work with families and, and they released a statement saying that Simon Harris is aware of what's going on. I think they were contacted by the Kerry's Eye newspaper last week and looked for a comment in relation to the, uh, the unfortunate death toll here and were they aware it's probably going to rise mm-hmm. and, and that you're not the only family obviously affected no, and no. they said they don't comment in individual cases was, was the tr- main trust of their, of their argument. From that point of view, if he does come down, um, will you be confident then that at least it's being it's been taken seriously that there is some sort of a response from either the minister or, or the teacher that they're they're listening to your concerns. Yes, yes. If he if he does do that, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, but even Brendan Griffin, who is our junior minister here, who is our Kerry junior minister, was asked in Kerry's eye as well. Yeah. Now, when he went looking for a meeting, it happened to be the same time as the nurses' strike. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot uh, going on. That was there in was February, an awful I think. lot, and yeah. there's a new meeting now for the middle of this month, I think, in but relation. But his it. statement in Kerry's eye was, "I understand that this meeting is now to take place in mid-May." Now, to me, I understand he didn't go making that meeting. Mm. Somebody else is whatever. I mean, you'd he like to see more of a response. Yes, and more I of would. A, again, that that word of urgency, I suppose. <laughs> yes. Okay, Marcella, we're short in time, okay. but I know we have Emily here who's your granddaughter. Emily, you, you live with, with, with Tony. You're, you're very, very close to him, understand. You're in junior cert, is it? No, second year. Second year, okay. And you're doing a, you've done a school project, to understand. Yeah. Can you tell me a bit about what you've written? Everybody. No, tell me a bit first. Um, it's about granddad's journey through, like, when it all started to when it ended. Okay. When you're ready. Everybody in life faces difficult journeys at times, and my granddad faced the most difficult journey of them all. A battle against all the odds. This battle is a delayed diagnosis of cancer. During the two-year period of 2016 to 2017, an awful tragedy took place in University Hospital Kerry and, of course, in my very own home. 
My granddad Tony Hannum was one of the 11 patients affected by this significant error caused by UHK with an individual radiologist. This radiologist who reviewed the slides was suspended last December from practising in Ireland. Grandad was wrongly given the all clear three times in 2016. It was delayed by 51 weeks. The signs of the cancer were eventually spotted on an x-ray in 2017 and the 71 year old was told to wait two months for an urgent CT scan to confirm the cancer. Even when the scan was confirmed to be cancer, we were told we had to wait a further two months for a supposedly urgent PET scan. Staff were going to leave Grand away all those extra months, despite what was going on. Nan said they say urgent, but it's not urgent unless they have a different meaning to what it says in the dictionary. After finding out Grand had got diagnosed with cancer around May 2017, we thought that was it, but it wasn't. We got a phone call in 2018 saying that he had got misdiagnosed and we couldn't figure out what was going on, then realised all those scans in 2016 is where it all started. He started off with stage 3 lung cancer. Tests and PET scans took place in Cork and when it was decided about the treatment, we had a choice between Limerick and Cork. We chose Limerick as it's easier to travel as it's only an hour drive from here. The treatment that took place was very severe as he'd done chemotherapy and radiotherapy all in six weeks. It was very tough for him as he had to go through so much. He is now stage 4 terminally ill with cancer located in the lung, liver and around the main artery of the heart. He is on oxygen 24 hours a day, a nebulizer up to 4 times a day and a lot of medication. In his first scan the tumour was only 3 centimetres so they could have taken it out but as he had got misdiagnosed 3 times after that by the time they had spotted it, it had spread to 13.5. I've lived with my granddad all my life and I've always known him as one funny man and still to the day he died he was still the same. If they got the cancer in time, his quality of life would be a lot different. But with the mistake that was made, he won't get the opportunity to walk ma'am down the aisle of the church or see Jodie in April on their first day of school. But only thinking he had a few months left to live after being given the all clear for cancer, Granda said his dying wish is for those responsible to be held to account and for my family to be looked after. Granda passed away on the 15th of April, but no one was expecting it as he was dancing around the room on the Saturday and never to him and me but he fought his battle until his very last breath. With the help of the palliative care unit in Southern Tralee, he got the best care he could have got to maintain the pain. He was the strongest person I knew, and he wasn't just my granddad, he was my best friend. Okay. Emily, listen, thanks very much for, for sharing that with us this morning. And Marcella, to you as well, thanks very much for and coming in and talking to us. thank you for giving me the opportunity, Jerry. I appreciate okay. it.